really want to talk about anxiety today because I feel like it's something that affects so many people but at the same time even though it affects so many people I feel like there's a very small amount of information out there. Everyone is completely different and therefore experiences anxiety in so many different ways. If you've seen some of my past videos you'll know just how much mental health affects children with dyspraxia let alone adults with dyspraxia as well. So I'm mostly going by experience so it's going to be um, for people mostly around my age and for the age group that I have previously experienced. As you may or may not know, dyspraxia has a very heightened sensitivity when it comes to emotion and um, general kind of sense of touch and feel. So when someone with dyspraxia is experiencing an anxiety attack, you have to bear in mind that their sensitivity is going to be incredibly high. Their sensitivity to sound, to light, to feel, and their general emotions as well are going to be heightened. So it's very difficult to kind of work out what kind of process it is that you need to take because like I said before it's different for everyone. The first experience that I had with panic attacks was when I was about 12 slash 13 years old and the only way to briefly explain it is that it genuinely feels like you're dying and that's not an over exaggeration in any way shape or form. You might be listening to this and thinking okay that's a little bit too far. It's genuinely not. Some people may experience it a little bit less than that but if you're someone who experiences anxiety to its full effect that's exactly what it feels like. It kind of feels like the room is closing in on you, everything around you is kind of spinning and you can just hear everything or it's you know all the sound disappears and then your vision disappears and all you want to do is literally just just like where you are, how many people are surrounding you, you just want to lie on the floor and just cry yourself to sleep. Sometimes that might actually be an okay thing to do, well, maybe not the falling asleep part, but you need to find somewhere as quickly as possible that is safe for you. So be it the corner of a room or if you know if you're in a shopping center, um, maybe find like a bench or something and if you need to lie down on that bench, you lie down on that bench. You need to be able to kind of calm yourself and just relax all of your muscles. If you yourself feel like you're able to stand up again, try and find some outdoor space and some water. If there's anyone nearby you, if they offer you water, then just say yes, <laughs> or ask, would you mind getting me some water please? And then after that, you'll just kind of start to relax a little bit again. But there are different types of anxiety attacks that you can have, which some of them are ones that I've been experiencing for the last three or four years, is panic attacks that last more than a day. And they tend to creep up on you a little bit, so you can't always work out what it is that's triggered it. And it could literally be anything. It could be something um, that's happened to you at work, something that's happened to you at school. It could even be that you couldn't get your hair to do what it is that you wanted that day and it's really thrown you off. It could literally be anything. And it just kind of creeps up on you and you start to feel a bit sick and are just a little bit nervous. And you can't sleep and you kind of feel really anxious just throughout the day but it's it creeps up on you so it builds up and it can last a few days and it can be really, really strange. There, I must have had about three set of panic attacks that lasted a few days and I didn't even realise that it was a panic attack that I was having. I just thought I was ill and I couldn't work out, you know, why am I ill? I'm, I think I'm fine, but at the same time I'm, I'm not fine. In the past I've had panic attacks in the most annoying of places that you could possibly have panic attacks. I remember being on a train and just suddenly feeling really hot and like all the sounds were going around me and I couldn't focus on any sound whatsoever and I could just feel all the textures, like I could feel the sweat on the palm of my hands, I could feel the texture of the chairs that I was leaning against, all of the um, seats were taken and like the train was moving and I was going somewhere that I didn't know and I was just panicking and I literally, <laughs> I just lay on the floor and just kind of sat down and leant on a chair that someone else was sitting on and they didn't move or anything so that was fine. Um, and I must have given myself about 10-15 minutes before I managed to come back round again and then I moved into one of the clearer spaces where the doors are and just kind of leant there. But it's always inconvenient times, as you can imagine there's no convenient time ever to have a panic attack, but you're probably going to be in the most strangest of situations. There's no way of being able to kind of know whether or not you're going to have a panic attack in a day. 
if you find yourself having panic attacks a lot, there are medications that can help you with it. It's something that I've used in the past and it's something I'm currently using to help. Never be afraid to go to your doctor and ask for help. Even, even if you literally just go in and say, I haven't been sleeping well recently, or, you know, I just keep feeling anxious all the time and having periods where I'm passing out or just really not feeling great. There's nothing wrong with admitting that you're not okay. It's okay to not be okay, and I've said this in so many videos, but it's true. You can only be okay if you're able to admit to not being okay every now and again. It's being okay with yourself. This is a thing that happens to you, it's a thing that happens to family members, it's a thing that happens to friends. I can guarantee if you have a chat with anyone and say to them, have you experienced panic attacks in the past or times of worry, and they'll probably say they have done. If someone with dyspraxia, all that's heightened and there's no saying when, you know, your sensitivity is going to be heightened because sometimes your sensitivity can be really, really low as well. I've experienced times where I can't hear anything very well or my touch is very limited and my sight and just everything and my emotions as well, which is kind of... You know, it has its ups and downs, the emotional side of it, but at the same time, it just means you're human. I'm going to put some links uh, down below um, that will guide you to places where if you are having panic attacks and you want someone to talk to, um, some links as well as kind of how to cope with panic attacks. Um, I hope this hasn't been too much of a serious video or hasn't been serious enough. Um, it's been a while since I've made videos um, because I have been experiencing panic attacks recently. But I feel like I'm back on the mend. I'm not giving up. Keep on going. Hope you guys have a nice day. Bye 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 bye.